Um, so on the test, if I ask you this, I'm going to make sure that, because what happens is this actually doesn't change the result at all. Because my Z star was so out there that if you look at the, the answer key, what was this, number four? See, first off, my rejection region was negative 1.645. For alpha equal to 0.05, so we got the negative 3.05, so that definitely rejects the null. If alpha had been 0.01, the rejection region would have been further out, but still that would have passed this test. Right? So it would. this is what would change, but the results would have been the same. So another reason why we report the p-value is it kind of gives me an idea how strong a test it could pass. So let me see if you guys are to this level with me yet. Uh, would you say alpha of a 0 0.10 is a strong test to pass? Let me see who can parse that question. 0 0.10, is that a strong test? Is that really good evidence? No, that's 10% chance I'm freaking wrong. Is that so p-values, if I said at a 10% level of confidence, or level of significance, then we found this. When my p-value was this freaking strong, no, screw that. I'm going to report this p-value. I'm going to look at that. That's strong. That's strong. As well. It would pass a 0 0.005 level of significance. Alpha it would pass that test because it's beyond that, right? It's smaller than that. It would pass that test. That's why p-values is another reason why they're the ones reported because they talk about how strong of a test they would have passed, no matter how strong the test was to begin with. So I gave a relatively weak test, 0 0.05, relative to this guy. This guy would blow that thing out of the water. It blows 0 0.01 out of the water. It would blow 0 0.005 out of the water. Okay, maybe, maybe. I don't know if you guys are with me. Because the smaller the p-value is, the less likely it is that what you found just happened randomly. The more likely it is that the mean really is in the wrong place. That's why the p-value is so important. The smaller the p-value, the more tests it would succeed. It would, you would find evidence. So small p-values means evidence. You found evidence. So anytime I brought up, I've shown you some journal stuff that had p-values in it, and they're always like, p less than 0 0.001 or something. That's all they got to say to go, oh shit, that's some evidence. Since we supported the claim, wouldn't you want to say still support? Of... What did I say? Still reject? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I was thinking about H naught. So still the same, still support. Thank you. I think I was going to write still reject H naught, still support H1, but I just stopped. So six uh, percentage problems, it always seems like I don't get enough information, but I don't need much information for them. Um, so six, how many samples have been taken on number six? Two. Two. So I'm going to have to use the, the Z star that's got two P's in it. P hat one, P hat two. Um, but what's the claim that's being made? Bless you. Good. So just to make it, uh, I can't remember if I, what did I do on the, did I say? I don't know if I said, was it five? I think so. So let's uh, call the students population one and we'll call the teachers population two. Holy crap. Somebody always cranks that bad boy up. All right. So you, when you have two samples, you need to identify for yourself group one and group two. Cool. So what can I figure out? Let's just figure some stuff out early because you can immediately figure out what P hat 1 is. What would P hat 1 be? What's group 1? Students. So P hat 1 is going to be? 63 out of 84. The percentage of students. So P hats are always just look at your sample and make a ratio. Part divided by whole. And that's the one that comes out to be 0.75? Yeah. Exactly. Right? There's the next one is zero. This is 0.75. Uh, so what's P hat 2? 34 out of 
before I ask you one. And that comes out to be 0 0.66666. Seven. Good, so 0 0.667. At least three places in this. <coughs> so what about P bar? That's that pool thing. That's we've broken them down into groups to get uh, to get a feel for what the population is. I'm going to put everybody back together, one big old group. So to get P bar, then it would be all the successes on top. Well, all, and then everybody on the bottom, the total on the bottom. Q bar would be all the failures on top and everybody on the bottom. So if you look at the answer key, did I actually write that down? No, I just said what P bar was. Ah, I was running out of room. Uh, and so that is where I get the 0.719 from, if you do that. What really sucks is when you set it up correctly in the paper, but then you put it in the calculator wrong. It so sucks. But dear God, if you get 1.07 for this, if I got 1.07, what should that immediately tell me? I should. It's, it's so wrong. Don't use it. Don't keep going. Because what is this? It's a percentage. A probability. This is a probability. So it's got to be less than one. Okay. But so what, I get my. You get 0.719. Yeah. That's what I got. Okay. I could certainly be wrong. It's for damn sure. Okay. So how are we doing so far? I mean, if you wanted to, you can kind of do this immediately. Just and then you're taking a test. It feels good to get some stuff done on any problem. And I got some stuff done. Um, but now we got to kind of go through the steps. Right? And on the test, I might do the same thing where I just say, uh, what did I say? Use the steps. I'll have a problem with all the steps. And then later I'll just say, use those same steps. I'm just going to list them all out again. So the first step is, what's the claim? P1 equals P2. Yep, P1 equals P2. That's the claim. So which one's that going to be? Uh, the hope. So the high is going to be. How many tail test? Two. Two. I like it. Cool. And the second step is: Can we use z scores or not? In this case, never tease with NPQs. I love that. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Never tease the what? So what do I have to check? <coughs> what do I check for normality? How do I check for normality? N P bar and Q bar. Yeah. So what's N P bar? N P bar. Yep, one thirty five times that. So that come out in ninety seven. That's bigger than five. Roughly 97. Right? And then and Q bar is going to be the rest. Minus 97. Oh. Did I do that? Yeah, oh yeah, I did. So it's roughly 38, much greater than five. Are you guys okay? What's Q bar? P bar is 0 0.719. What's Q bar? One minus this. Which is 2.81. 281. So you can just do 135 times P bar. Because, uh, uh, let me see. What is 84? What is the symbol for 84 right there? This is P hat 1. And 1. 51 would be N2. So N is just everybody. The total number of people he had, or things, if you're looking at shoes or whatever. So this is going to be 135, that's the total, times P bar. This should come out to roughly 97, and this should come out to roughly 38 when I multiply 135 times 0 0.281. Those are both bigger than 5, which means I can use Z scores, because it's normal enough. If either one of those came out less than 5, It's not normal, so then I can't do anything. Because what does T-scores need? T-scores need normality, right? 
So if it's normal, z scores. If it's not normal, not t, you just can't do shit. You can't do anything, at least in stats one. How did you get to 38 again? Oh, uh, so n was 135 total, right? And q bar is 0 0.281. So when you multiply that, I think it comes out to be 37 point something. 37.9. Roughly 38. Okay. So that was just to check. That's step two, because what's step two always? What do I use? Z's, T's, or nothing? In this case, it was Z's or nothing. And thankfully, I can use Z scores. Now, trust me, even if you think on a test that it's not normal, do it. Just say, if you want to, say, I can't see why this is normal, but I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be the person that puts a whole problem on a test that, oh, you should have realized you didn't have to do that. Because like I said the other day, what are you allowed to do? Did I tell you guys that? No. I didn't say this to you? Well, this must be my other class. Some other problem. But if I did that to you, you are allowed to slap me in the face, right? If I put a problem I'm like, oh, you didn't notice you didn't have to do that problem? Ah, too bad. No. You are completely allowed to knee me, slap me in the face, whatever you want to do. That's, that's just bullshit. You shouldn't stand for that. So I'm not going to do that to you. Not on purpose. So every single problem you should do, if you think I made a mistake and I didn't have the sample size big enough and it didn't say, say that, and then just do it anyway. If you don't do it, then I got nothing to grade. That's no good. I'm not going to trick you, right? Even if you think I do, I don't. So that's uh, step one is, what are we trying to talk about? Step two is, what can we use to talk about it? Z-scores. Step three is, that's right. Rejection reason. What's going to be enough evidence? So in this problem, it was alpha is 0.02. Two-tail test, right? Z scores. Good. 2.326. So then in words, you get some, you know, if, Z, if Z star is less than negative 2, blah, 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 greater than 2, blah, blah, blah. We can reject and null support the high. I like it. It's all on the answer key. I think at this point, can I? Are we? So that's where we just are right now, right? Setting up the rejection region. Then we have our p hat one, our p hat two that we calculated. We throw it into the formula. The bottom gets kind of big because it's got to have a lot of room for a lot of stuff. And I got 1.04 at the end of that. So there's P bar, Q bar over N1, P bar, Q bar over N2. Is that cool? P hat 1 minus P hat 2. Okay. I've got back bad memories of my stats. Then you put P bar times Q bar over. So I'm sure some kids feel the same way about me. Oh, well. Is that, is that cool? I mean, it's got the same feel, it's got the same purpose, it's got the same sort of computations going on as any hypothesis test. My Z star formula is just a little bit bigger. Of course it is, because it's got more shit to put in there. It's got more stuff to put in there. So 1.04 was nowhere near far enough. What would the P value be for this? Let's see if you guys can look that up. Try to look up the P value for this. It's a two-tailed test. Let's see if somebody remembers. What the hell that means? I think I have a z-score chart. Steal it from this person who dropped. So when you look up 1.04, you get 0.8508, but is that the area in my tail? No. No. That's the area down here, so 0.8508. So the area in my tail would then be 1 minus that. 1492. Columbus. And that's not my p-value. It's a two-tail test, so you double it. That's all. So the p-value would be 0.2984. Maybe. Yeah. 
So again, that if I got a p-value like that, I did not find evidence of anything. It's just 1.04 is barely more than one step away. Ooh, it's not very far away at all. Where the middle in the middle, that could be the middle. Totally could be. I didn't get very far away from that. It's not evidence that it's not there. Maybe so. P values are always the area in your tail that your Z star makes. If it's a two tail test, you just double it. So then the area, that's always the area below what I just looked up. Right. So the area in my tail that I would make would be 1 minus that. 1 minus that. Yeah, because the whole thing, of course, is 1. All the probabilities have to make 1. Uh, so real quick, just deal with me here. Anybody do uh, animal training? Like uh, uh, running? sprints and stuff? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is just the first uh, link that I saw up here. It's a study about... 12 weeks of sprint interval training improves indices of cardiometabolic health, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. So, I mean, any, now, one thing I hope you're able to do now after this class is find journal articles about something you're interested in and actually be able to interpret what the hell they're saying. So let's see how much of this shit stuff <laughs> makes sense. Uh, I like this. Sedentary men. Uh, what, what, what's that look like? The VO2 max? Error. Yeah, it looks like error. So 26 give or take 6 kilograms per uh, square meter. So I don't know if you guys all know what BMI is about. Body mass index. Yeah, I like it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Where's something? Oh, look here. Uh, let's see. Determined by intravenous glucose tolerance tests performed before and after, 72 hours after training. Increased. Did they find evidence of something? Yeah. Yes. Kick ass. Now look down here. Uh, the corresponding changes in the control group were small. Yes, that's not evidence of shit, right? Those are huge P's. I mean, ah. So at least you can make sense out of why they're able to make the statements they are when they give the P values. That's the evidence that they found, right? Maybe. All right. You can see uh, confidence intervals in here, right? All right, I'll stop. They give you a p-value, and then they give you like uh, alpha here. P less than 0.05. They're using 0.05 as their benchmark alpha. And I didn't write this and put this up here. So this is just the first thing I found. My favorite thing to do is type the word study and look over the past week, and then you can see these studies... There's an obesity explosion in China. That was in the paper. Uh, that's horrible. Suicide rates. It's always bad stuff in here. Uh, mass surveillance breeds meekness. Okay, that's different. Anyway, Mediterranean diet. Oh boy, now people got to do that again. Spanking kids causes mental health issues. Okay. okay. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> That belt, oh man. It's like, oh shit. Oh, memories. It's better than the soap than the mouth. And then you've seen Christmas story, and this kid's like, he's blind. Why are you blind? Soap. Poisoning. What's that? 
Hot sauce? Hot sauce. Hot sauce. No, so like I said the other day, when you're doing the hypothesis tests, just use my setup. Don't, their sheet is a, a little insane. You just have to use uh, the five question setup. Yeah, yeah. This is all contingent on you guys. I have really nothing. Obviously, I'm talking about getting my ass beat and talking about Game of Thrones. If you guys have no questions, I tend to go off on tangents. Can I do number seven? All right, so now seems like a good time to do number seven. Which is going to be extra credit on. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing about number seven, the main reason I made it extra credit is not because it's difficult, it's just because I knew that there wasn't enough time to really force this much more homework on top of you. And you're all like, you know, take some of the other ones away too. But. So here's the funny thing about sec uh, this section, what was it in? Section 10-4? So this is from section 10-4. That was the extra credit section. So, do you see the idea though? This is, this is getting a little more powerful because now I'm testing to see if there is uh, an effect. I'm actually trying to test to see if there's an effect of some program. So, before somebody went on this exercise diet, they weighed 234, now they weigh 216. Uh, this poor person gained three pounds, but maybe it's muscle mass, you never know, right? Probably not. Uh, and then everybody seems to have lost some weight, but is this enough loss to show evidence that the diet exercise the thing actually works? This is a very big sample. <coughs> no, so it actually has to be like really, really good evidence. You with me? So the funny thing with this kind of problem is, this is not your data. You create your data by just taking the differences. Your list of data will be the differences. And then your null will be that uh, the differences equal zero. The mean of the difference, because if there was, if there was, if there was no effect, then the average difference should be zero, right? It really has no effect. So you're trying to show evidence that it's not zero. In this case, I probably want to show evidence that the difference is greater than zero, right? Well, it depends on how you subtract. But if you do this minus this to see how much weight lost, so do that for all these and uh, do all the differences. Like this is 18, right? You guys cool with me? See what's going on? Okay. This is 10, So what? Would, and this is 1, what would this one be? Negative 3. Negative 3, I like it. And then 7, uh, 13, 16, 3, 16, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 11, cool. Yes. So that, now it's just like I gave you this problem. There's your list of data. So on step 4, I'm going to have to calculate my own x bar. I'm going to have to calculate my own s. But then all the steps are the same. So that's really all 10-4 is. It just starts you off with something we're not used to, but then I just take differences and there you go. So what's my claim that's being made? The mean is greater than the Yeah, probably the mean, I don't really say do I, but I think I wanted you to figure out what the claim should be. Uh, the mean shouldn't be less than zero. That would suck. That means that everybody gained weight on my awesome exercise and diet regimen, right? It's fantastic. Um, so the claim should be that my mean weight loss is greater than zero. So then which one's that going to be? High. So the hoe would be? Less than or equal to. Good. That's what I'm fighting against, right? I don't want people to gain weight or to not lose any weight. I want them to have lost weight. So it is a one cell test. What's the next step? She's had a peer rejection region. No? You're ahead of me. Yeah. Do I, can you use E or T or what? Yeah, in fact, uh, here I said it's normally distributed, right? So I got that check, check. So one, normal, check. Two, I'm only going to, I don't know sigma. I'm going to find S in a minute. So then I have to use T squares. Now, step C is 
rejection, rejection region. Where's the rejection region going to be? What side? Yeah, up. Right. Pong Juan said it's a yes. So, what's my degrees of freedom? Now, here's where you got to be a little careful. How many data points do I actually have? What did I say the data was? Nine. Yeah, I have nine data points. So, my degrees of freedom is eight. I like this. So people sometimes tell me I have 18 data points, but this is one person, so that's nine data points. I like it. So degrees of freedom of eight, alpha is 0.01, one tail test. What's my T score gonna be? I have no idea, I gave all my T scores away. Eight, nine, six. Say one more time was? 2.896. 2.896? Yes. Verification? Yes. 2.896. So if T star greater than 2.896, reject blah, blah, blah. Right. Don't do this on the test. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you did in class, Jeff. Step D now is, so uh, what the hell are we talking about? What can we use to talk about it? What will be enough evidence? Did we get enough evidence? What the hell did we just do? That's the five steps. So now I have to put into list one my data, right? So let's see. Let me just use my calculator here. Make it quick. Hopefully everybody realizes uh, there's a negative key and a minus key. If you use the wrong one, your calculator will have a uh, hissy fit. Right? There's a negative key and there's a minus key. So got all the data in there. Does that look right? Yes. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. And then stats. Where'd I go? Cal? So this is what it looks like in the newer ones, right? Yeah. Frequency list would be if you have in list one a two and next to it you have 11 because you have 11 two. So your frequency list would be L2. We haven't really done stuff like that. So calculate. Oh, Nita. Right. 8.4. So wait, we get X bar is 8.44. S is... 7.038. So what's S sub X bar? 7.038 divided by square root of 9. nine. Two point three four six. Let me stop there for a second. Is everybody sort of with me so far? I mean. To be honest, 10.4 is way nicer than 10.3 and 10.2. The reason I'm okay with making 10.4 extra credit is just because of that. It's not very much new in it. 10, uh, the other ones had a lot of new stuff. They had the X bar 1 minus X bar 2, P hat 1 minus, that was totally new. 10.4, you take the differences and then it's all the same as 10.1. It's, it's all the same. It's not even 10.1, to be honest. Uh, I have one sample here, don't I? Really, that's one sample of differences. It's a one sample. I'm going to use a smaller Z star. <coughs> so this is a, I'm trying to get you to understand, this is a very doable extra credit section if you find time. Uh, so Z star would be, what's my mean? 8.44 and minus what? Holy crap, they got Zero. That's what I'm trying, I'm trying to see if it's different from zero. Is it different from zero enough? Divided by 
So I got 3.60. Is that far enough away? Hell yeah. So then can I run my commercial yes. and say, my experiment has been clinically shown to, to, to reduce your weight. Yeah. That's what they mean when they say that. When they say that, they have at least one study that showed uh, sufficient evidence that there was a difference. Right? You guys know? So there's no, because you didn't eat. Point four four minus zero because there's no P or? Oh, well, again, do you guys see by now that this number comes from here? Oh, okay. I'm always assuming that that is the middle. Okay. But in general, what is it that I'm fighting against with this kind of a problem is that there is no effect. And what would that mean? That the difference would be zero. So I'm always trying to see my effect, how far away from zero is it? Did it get far enough away from zero? Maybe, maybe. And hopefully everybody's beyond the point that, like, well, most of the people lost weight, so why do we have to do all this? Because it's just a small little sample. It's got to be, like, really good evidence. You guys can leave. It's okay. I like everybody's like, sitting further and further out. Come on, stop talking, Jeff. Yeah? Uh, what does this say where T scores is greater than 2 right next to it? 2.896. I mean, that was the Z T score, 2.896. Oh, okay. Then we can reject the null, support the high. The same old stuff. So this is even more.